Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici, I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video we are covering CCNA semester 4, Connecting Networks. This is chapter 1, Hierarchical Network Design. Chapter 1, Hierarchical Network Design Objectives. Section 1.1, Hierarchical Network Design Overview. Here we describe how a hierarchical network model is used to design networks. Explain the structured engineering principle for network design, hierarchy, modularity, resiliency and flexibility. Then we describe the three, layered of three layers of hierarchical network and how they are used in a network design. Then we identify the benefits of hierarchical design. Then we move on to section 1.2, Cisco Enterprise Architecture. Here we describe the Cisco Enterprise Architecture module. Then we move on to section 1.3, Evolving Network Architectures. Here we describe the three new business network architectures, Borderless Network Architecture, Collaboration Network Architecture, and the Data Center or Virtualization Network Architecture. Okay, so let's move on to section 1.1, Hierarchical Network Design Overview. Network Requirements When discussing network design, it is useful to categorize network based on the number of devices serviced. We have a small networks, which provide services for up to 200 devices. Then we have a medium-sized network, provides services from 200 to 1000 devices. And then we have a large network, which provides services for 1000 plus devices. Network designs vary depending on the size and requirement of the organization. For example, the network infrastructure needs of a small organization with fewer devices will be less complex than the infra infrastructure of a larger organization with a significant number of devices and connections. Structured engineering principles. Here we have, here we have a hierarchy. It breaks the complex problem of a network design into small and man more manageable areas. We have a modularity. By separating the various functions that exist on the network into modules, the network is easier to design. Resiliency, the network must remain available for use under both normal and abnormal conditions. And flexibility, the ability to modify a portion of the network and add services or increase capacity without going through the major forklift upgrade, i.e. replacing major hardware devices. So structured engineering principles are hierarchy, modularity, resiliency, and flexibility. Network hierarchy. In a networking, a hierarchical design involves dividing the network into discrete layers. Each layer, or tier, in the hierarchy provides specific functions that define its role within the overall the network. This helps the network designers and architect to optimize and select the right network hardware, software, and features to perform specific roles for the network for that network layer. Hierarchical model applied for to both LAN and WAN design. We have access layer, which provides a work group or user access to the network. Distribution layer provides policy-based connectivity. Core layer provides fast transport between distribution switches. The access layer. In the LAN environment, the access layer grants the end devices access to the network. In the wide area network environment, it may provide teleworkers or remote sites access to a corporate network across one connections. The access layer for a small business network generally incorporates layer two switches. The access layer services serves a number of functions, including layer 2 switching, port security, address resolution protocol inspections, spanning tree, high availability, quality of service classification and marking, and trust boundaries, VLAN access control list, and power over Ethernet, or PoE, and auxiliary VLAN vo for voice over IP. The distribution layer. The distribution layer aggregates the data received from the access layer switches before it's transmitted to the core layer for routing to its final destination. The distribution layer is the boundary between layer 2 domains and the layer 3 routed network. 
The distribution layer device is a focal point of the wiring closet. The distribution layer can provide aggregation of LAN or wide area network links, policy based security in the former ACLs or access control list and filtering, routing services between LAN and VLAN and between routing domains, I, example EIGPU to OSPF, redundancy and load balancing, a boundary for root aggregation and summarization configured on interfaces towards the core layer. Broadcast domain control because routers or multi-layer switches do not forward the broadcast. Then we have the core layer. The core layer is also referred to as a network backbone. The core layer consists of high-speed network devices such as Cisco Catalyst 6500 or 6800. These are designed to switch packets as fast as possible and interconnect multiple campus components. The core layer should be highly available and redundant. Cons consideration at the core layer include providing high-speed switching, example fast transport, provide reliability and fault tolerance, scaling by using faster and more and not more equipment, and this is very important. In a core layer, we do want to avoid CPU-intensive packet manipulation caused by security inspections, security inspection, quality service, classification, or other processes. Two-tiered collapse core design. The three-tiered hierarchical design maximizes the performance, network availability, and the, A is, and the ability to scale the network design. However, Many small enterprise networks do not grow significantly larger over time. Therefore, a two-layer hierarchical design where the core and distribution layer are collapsed into one layer is often more practical. A collapse core is when the distribution layer and the core layer functions are implemented by a single device. The primary motivation for the collapse core design is reducing network cost while maintaining most of the benefits of the three-tier hierarchical network model. Thank you for watching my video. Please have a look at other videos and don't forget to subscribe. The next video coming is 1. section 1.2 Cisco Enterprise Architecture. Bye-bye.